Hello friends, David with Dayfish84 here. Trout season has officially started, as in it is the fall time, and trout fishing always gets good here in the fall. I've been fishing around the overpass bridges in New Bern, the overpass bridge, and I know guys have been fishing around the trestle bridge. All that's been good. Every time I'm going out, I'm getting fish. Doesn't take any time at all. Black drum have been in. They could be moving up, but the trout are here to stay. The, the creeks are starting to load up. Got some awesome fish today at, up in a creek huge ones. I mean, all solid 20 inches up to 23 inches, really awesome fish. But I want to show you something real quick. Just a trip after work at less than an hour before dark, I nailed them. And then I'm, I, I'm going to show you how to flay these fish the right way and a really cool recipe. And I'm going to throw up a bunch of videos like this. Every time I've been going out, I've been videoing. I have a whole stockpile of videos to edit and throw up. And I've got a really good one from today and it's going to continue. I hope you can, I'm not the best trout fisherman, but I'm pretty good at it. And I want to do everything I can to teach you what I know. And hopefully you enjoy these videos and learn something from them. Everything from the catching, the cleaning and the cooking part. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this one and learn something. Please remember to leave a comment, a thumbs up, and even subscribe if you haven't already. Every fall, the speckled sea trout start to change their patterns up from coastal areas in deeper into the rivers and staging outside of creek mouths before they have their winter patterns up in the creeks. Every year in eastern North Carolina, here in Newburn, around this bridge, the overpass bridge, they stack up and start feeding like crazy. They've been there for a month. They're probably going to be there for another month, but they're already starting to show up in the creeks in good numbers. This was no exception. They're still there. All right, the Rapella just got nailed. x rap We're on. We're on. We're on. We're on. It didn't take long at all. Feels like a nice fish. Did not take long at all. I was literally just talking. Oh, we got one right now, I guess. I was just talking about it. We're trolling. Put the phone up here. Gotta keep tension, gotta keep tension. It's a nice fish. It's a nice fish. Keep tension here. We're trolling. <laughs> That's with the X-Rap, the Pellet X-Rap. Feels like a nice fish. Seriously, I've been out here five minutes. Five minutes, I already got a nice fish to get the net ready. Pretty sure I got a nice trout here. Pretty sure we got a nice trout here. Yep. Looks out oh, really nice. Holy smokes, that's an awesome trout. Whoa! Look at the size of this trout, y'all! That's a horse! That is a pig! Are you kidding me? Nope, nope, nope. Don't lose the pole. One thing about kayak fishing, I've lost a couple and it's not very hard to do. Especially when you're excited. Yeah. Hooked really good. That's the thing about this Rapella lure, man. Hooks, get him. Look at this. That's a, that's a hoss. That's a nice trout right there. We're keeping one. The rest I'm letting go. That's dinner tonight. But literally the rest I catch tonight, we're letting it go. Man, man, five minutes. Oh, it already. I mean, come on. Seriously? Gotta love it. Got to love it. Check that out right there. Yeah, I've been out here five minutes. Five minutes. Already got one on the Rapella X Wrap Gold. It's happening. I mean, this is a beauty. I don't even have to measure this. I already know this is a 19, 20 inch trout right here. We're going to keep this one for dinner. The rest I'm going to let go. But we're going to in for an awesome night. Five minutes in. Five minutes. And I still got an hour. We're going we're gonna to slay them. I'm going to keep my first one and the rest all letting go. Tomorrow after uh, Black Drum and Sheephead and Moorhead, I might do a live on that one. We'll see. Haven't done that yet, but I need to start doing some live videos for sure. Just so you can see like how I actually do what I do in real life. I think that might be interesting. All right, we got another one on the X-Wrap. Controlling the soft plastic mirror lure. This one feels really good. Pull and drag. I was a little slow getting the camera ready. But, ah, gosh, this is a good fish. Pulled a lot of drag. It's got a lot of head shakes. I know it's a trout. Just by the way, it's shaking its head. You can tell they shake their head a lot. Sometimes they come to the surface and do this gator roll. <laughs> but it's just, it's doing that underwater. Pull, yeah, that's a, this is a very good fish right here. I was <laughs> just on the phone with my fiance when this one hit. Oh, there he is. And I was like, oh, we got a fish, I gotta go. Oh my gosh, that's a monster. Are you kidding me? 
bikini. All right, what we got? What we got? That's a big fish. That's a big trout. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? These are all like, I mean, it's not like anything to write home about like a record, but again, look at the size of this. It's a big trout. It's a big trout. Tangled up with my other line. The only thing I like, I don't like about the extra app lure I'm using is the that's the trout I'm keeping splashing. Is the, uh, the hooks caught my net like crazy, but hey, this, this is crazy. Unbelievable. Let me get this thing unhooked and I'll make another video to show you a fish here. All right, fish number two here. Nice and easy. We're going to let this one go. I'm going to be very gentle. It's about an 18, 19, probably 19 inch trout. Solid, solid fish. I don't want to get my hands all over it, get all the uh, slime off, but that's an awesome fish. I'm going to let this one go. Check this out. Seriously, these are awesome fish. We got our one on the stringer we're gonna keep and we're gonna let this one go. Look how fat these are. I mean these are awesome sized trout. Incredible. Okay, 15 minutes in I got two. Uh, basically the same area on the same lure on this Rapella X wrap. Gonna get that out and that's all tangled up in there now. But gosh, this is awesome. All right, I know you can't see me very good, but that was an awesome little quick trip after work. We got two awesome trout. I missed two. I'm gonna go back and do a catch you cook, sweet and sour, Filipina style. I can do Chinese style, which I'm gonna do um, in the future as well. But we're gonna do Filipina style, sweet and sour trout tonight. And I'm gonna rush because I'm getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. It's 80 degrees today, even though we're almost at Halloween. Oh, let me get the heck out of here and start filleting and cooking that fish up. I'm going to show you how to fillet a trout and how to cook it up sweet and sour Filipino style. All right. How do you fillet a fish, a sea trout, any fish? It's the same exact way every single time. I've filleted thousands of fish in my lifetime. I let go 99% of the fish that I've caught in my life, but I do like to eat fish. And you should enjoy your catches sometimes. So you're gonna take a nice sharp knife. I use Dexter blades. They I always sharpen it before I use it. I've already sharpened this one. They're not expensive, but they're awesome knives. They sharpen easy. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna angle the, the knife down by the gills and towards the head. And one quick cut like that. And then down towards the spine, and then working back towards the tail. And you're going to run right along the spinal cord. So like this. Just making an outline. That's all I'm doing. I do this a little differently than most people. A lot of people will just go ahead and finish that play all the way through. I'll do, I'll score it a little deeper like that. I'm going to turn it over and do the same. So down towards the head quick cut man it's so sharp all right so then down towards the spine like before and then towards the tail just like this once i get it in i'm just gonna make a quick little pressure and then just a glide like that it's like you're almost like you're painting you're just kind of like gliding along once you do that you put it back into the same area so this is what i want you to see what you're doing is you got the spine right here that comes up and you're just bringing that knife and working right between the meat and the spine. It's like that. You're just working along the spine. You gotta be careful, these knives are so sharp, sometimes it goes right into the bone. And uh, that's what I've done. I'm trying to make this video, I'm trying to be too careful. You wanna go above it, not into it. We can always check for them later. Just pull a little pressure. You're just kind of pulling that meat of that fillet to the side as you're cutting it. And then <clears throat> there's a rib cage right here. I just kind of go right along that. When I get to this point, I flip it. Watch this. One quick, just like this. Just like that. Bam. There's no song. It's the quick. Just like right through. Look at that filet. 
I'm gonna show you how to take the skin off that in just a second. This female had eggs. That's why I let 99% of the fish I go, catch go. We caught another one the same size tonight and you're allowed four per day. In North Carolina, it used to be 10. But four per day, I caught another one the same size and we let that one go immediately. All about <clears throat> catch and release, but yeah, we wanna enjoy some of this. We're gonna make an awesome dish out of this. It's gonna be super delicious but we want to let most of what we catch go tomorrow. I'm after sheephead and black drum. And I'm going to let, I think, everything, maybe I'll, I got to keep some sheephead because I like eating sashimi a lot and sheephead are awesome for that. Black drum are one of my favorite fish to eat. You can keep, keep 10 of those a day, but we're going to, we're going to keep some sheephead, but we're going to let most of what we catch go. Well, look at those awesome fillets. This would be awesome. Shark bait or good for your garden. Bury that in the sand, throw that in the woods for the, for the raccoons or uh, use it for shark bait. Or another thing you can do is you take the guts out, the gills out, keep the head and the body, and you can make an awesome fish stock. This is something that they do all over Asia from China to Southeast Asia. That's another recipe I'm gonna show you. And this one here, this is a delicacy. This is a, the, the swim bladder. It's what helps the fish stay buoyant so they can float or sink. But this thing here, you take that out, and uh, that's a delicacy, at least in Guangdong province in China, the southern part near Hong Kong. Huge delicacy. There are a lot of things in these fish that you can eat that most of us Americans are not used to, but it's really, really good. I might make a fish stock out of this, actually, because it's uh, I need some stock. I'm going to do that. All right, so I have my fillets with the skin. Check this out. Really sharp blade. You're going to start from the tail and go up. You're just working up a little bit. Once you get a little bit of, you get a little bit in there, you're going to grab that skin part. You're going to fold the meat over, grab that skin meat, skin part. And you see that red stuff? You want to get rid of that. That's where all the nasty fish flavor is. You get rid of that. That's the bloodline. You don't want that. I'm going to grab that, just like I did before. One quick score like that. And then one more. I'm going to go right through it. Bam. That's the skin. Garbage. Now you have this awesome filet. If you're going to freeze it, especially, you've got to get rid of this red meat. You're going to get just nice and easy. It's right along that middle section. You're just going to cut that out. That stuff is very strong. If you cook it fresh, it's not as bad. But whenever you freeze it, that just gets even stronger and worse flavor any of that red meat just get rid of it and then you're gonna get rid of any of the guts that might have got stuck on there run your finger from the top part where the head was down you're gonna feel the bones there's bones 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 right here what we're gonna do right where those bones are just like that you can see that coloration too it's different you could eat that a lot of Asian cultures, again, that's all cooked, but they're good at, I'm good at, um, eating that and spitting the bones out. But if you're afraid of bones, you need to cut that off and throw it away. If you're not afraid of bones, this is good to eat, but also this is where the mercury is in the stomach area. That's where all the toxins can be. So this can be one of the worst parts of the meat. But when you're talking about mercury, not so much a problem here, but a problem in the belly meat. Feeling that? It's got no bones. What I'm going to do is uh, rinse this off real quick and uh, get all the slime off. And I'm going to freeze one of them. And gonna... All right, we're about to make our sweet and sour speckled sea trout. I'm going to do this with a twist. It's going to be a fusion of Chinese and Filipino style. I lived in China for over eight years. It's a long, long story. And now my fiance is from the Philippines. This is going to be a real treat. I'm telling you both places, there's a variety of different ways to have sweet and sour sauce in China and it's different in the Philippines, but there is unique differences that we're gonna make a fusion, which is gonna make this awesome. Let me show you our ingredients here. For the sauce, I'm gonna show you, it's just basically gonna be uh, apple cider vinegar, white vinegar, ketchup, plum sauce, oyster sauce, brown sugar. And then we're gonna saute. Well, we've already chopped these up. We have tomatoes, onions, garlic. You need ginger, of course, when you want to make a cooking show on something, you go to the store and they don't have any ginger, they're all out. So slice your ginger up uh, really thin, thinner than the, the hot peppers. These are like jalapeno peppers, I like a little spice of mine, green onions, you got the, the white 
stem part and then the upper green part we're going to garnish at the end. This is our batter mixture. This is just flour, baking powder, a little bit of salt, and cornstarch. So basically, I'm doing a very small version. Do like 90% uh, flour and 7% cornstarch and the rest baking powder. That ratio, it doesn't have to be perfect. Really, really does not. It's not rocket science. This will work, trust me. And then we take our sea trout in some very cold salt water for 10 minutes. I'm gonna pat this dry. We're gonna batter it up and deep fry. All right, oil's hot. I have rinsed off this fish, dried it off, patted it off. We're gonna put it in our dry mixture here. Coat it, just coat all sides. We're gonna take this outside of the deep fryer right now. Basically, you just want, all right, I'm just gonna take those fish. Look at that, went really hot. I've got a 400, I'm gonna turn it down to 375. But that initial putting it in, you want it to be really hot. Now we're gonna cook this a little bit in the pan so we don't need to fully cook, we just want the coating. All right, so after just a few minutes, I'll take these out. Just want that coating to be nice and crispy, which it is. Put that on some. All right, now in this bowl, we're gonna make our sauce. Brown sugar, about three to four tablespoons. About three tablespoons apple cider vinegar. Two tablespoons white vinegar. Teaspoon and a half oyster sauce. Two tablespoons plum sauce. That's going to help give it that sour flavor as well as the vinegar. Ketchup. I guess we're going to put a generous amount of that in, probably quarter cup. About a cup of water. And we're just going to stir that up real good. I'm going to go ahead and saute our vegetables and then add this mixture to the vegetables and cook it down. I might add a little bit of uh, cornstarch to thicken this up if we need to. Just want to stir that up real good. All right, so at this point, we are just going to start frying up our vegetables. Start out with the onions. Got a fairly high heat. jalapeno peppers, and of course, if we had the ginger, we'd have started off with the ginger right from the beginning and sauteed it for about 45 seconds. Then we're in with the garlic. We're just gonna stir that around a little bit, let everybody get to know each other. Make sure the, oven, the oil's covering everything. If you see any pieces that are too big, you can use your spatula, just kinda cut it down a bit. And we're in with our tomatoes and our carrots. Just basically put in all your vegetables at this point and keep stirring them around. And then we're gonna put in about two tablespoons of soy sauce and we're gonna mix that around. Green onions in. And now we're gonna grab our sauce it's okay, I'm eating it by myself. Yeah, I did pick that off the floor. Yep. Wouldn't do that if I'm serving it to somebody else, but it's for me, I don't care. Keep my floor clean.
All right, so once you uh, mix that all around, just trying to make sure the oil was covering everything. Now I'm gonna grab my sauce, and we're gonna mix that around, and then putting in cornstarch, basically just dry cornstarch, add a little bit of cold water, and swish it around with your finger or spoon until it dissolves. You put it into your sauce and mix it around on high heat, and that's gonna reduce down and thicken up. I'll then put my fish in, and we're almost ready to serve this up. Like we don't want to cook it, it's already been cooked, so we're just heating it up. Just making sure the sauce is spread around on the fish really good. That's basically all there is to it. I've already turned the heat off. Now let me show you a cool trick with rice. You take your rice from your rice cooker, take a little bowl like this. Put it in the bowl. Just kind of press it down like that. We're going to take our fish, lay it on the top of that rice like that. Take some of those green onions. There we go. All right. I already know this is going to be good, but I'm going to show you. If you are looking for something different, you know, you always fry your fish or you always bake your fish the same old way. This is worth trying. I have a lot of Asian recipes, a lot of different unique things to spice up your trout fishing. You catch so many trout, you can only eat it the same way so many times. So give this a shot. Sweet and sour, speckled sea trout. This is a, a fusion of like a, a mix between Chinese and Filipino styles. Hmm. Wow. That is really, really, really good. I'm gonna crush this. But yeah, this is this is a great recipe. There are so many more I'll, I'll show you how to do. But yeah, try this one out. It's really not that difficult and it is worth the effort to put in. You're not gonna get this at a restaurant anywhere here unless you're going overseas to get. This is off the charts good. Well, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you learned something from it. Definitely give this a shot. It's super good. I have a whole bunch more recipes from Asia like this coming up different ways from fishing to the cleaning to the cooking. I have all kinds of stuff coming your way. So if you haven't already subscribed, please consider helping my channel out and subscribing to our channel. Give it a thumbs up and be expecting a lot more videos like this. And as always, God bless and I'll see you on the next one.